Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. We're going to do another session tonight on the calibration settings within Orca Slicer that are built in. So the calibration tests that you can run to really fine tune your machine or your filaments, what have you. Um, there are, it's really easy to set up and do. There are a couple of little things that I want you to take into account before you go off and run it. So then we'll talk about how to set it up, how to go run it, and then how to um, make your changes a permanent, quote unquote, uh, once you figure out what your best settings are. So here we go. Get ready. It's, um, this is not going to take long. <clears throat> make sure you're starting with a brand new project, right? So home, new project, make sure you're all clean. Um, don't worry about anything in your settings right now yet. You don't have to do anything just yet. Come up here to calibration. Come on down here to retraction test. Now, depending on what sort of extruder setup you're running, you're going to want to put in some, an upper and lower limit for your, for this to start at. So I run direct drive extruders on all of my Ender threes. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this relatively conservative and say at the bottom of this, I'm going to have zero millimeters of retraction. And at the top end, I'm going to do three millimeters of retraction. Really anything more than that for me is anything more than three is probably I can I can almost smell it that it's kind of pointless. The steps here are in, in, in which increments do you want to increase your retraction settings, right? So I'm going to stick with a 0.2 millimeter um, increment in retraction settings as it moves up the towers. Um, now, if you're running a Bowden style setup, obviously your settings are going to be a little bit different. Maybe you want to start at two millimeters and go up to something like eight or 10 or whatever, right? You probably know your machine best. Um, I would just be careful on the top end, right? Not going too far because then you're going to get a lot of under extrusion and then you're going to get some clogging and, and all that good stuff. So keep it relatively conservative and just keep in mind, this is a very short test. So if you don't, if you're still getting, you know, hairy results on your first go, then you can increase on, on test number two and change your retraction settings. Now you hit okay. It will generate. Let me go ahead and move this out of the way so you can see. It generates and it does give you a little bit of a warning. This is, I mean, it says error, but it's orange, so it's a warning. So it will still print. Don't repair it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. In the segmentation process of the model, it throws in some non manifold edges. This thing prints just fine, should print, print fine for me. Uh, so you should be good to go with the way it is. Don't repair it. You're okay. Now, before you go off and just say slice plate and go run, Go do two things. One, make sure Z-Hop is turned off, right? Z-Hop promotes stringing, uh, and you, it will give you a bad test result if you have it turned on. So turn it off. The way you turn it off is you come up here to your printer, um, your printer settings, click the edit preset button, make sure you're on the extruder tab, find Z-Hop underneath retraction, make sure it sets to normal. Nothing else, no auto, no spiral, no, just make sure it's off, and then make sure you save it. Okay, so with that there, you're set. Now, the other thing that you're gonna wanna do is, is position your seam in the correct location. So by default, you can see here under my quality tab and seam, by default, I, my seam always goes in the back. You don't really wanna do this for this, for this particular test, in my opinion. I think you can, you can get sort of a false positive. Uh, you really wanna place your seams for each one of these cylinders opposing each other. So the way to do that quickly and easily is basically just to click on seam painting, uh, pick a brush type, a circle or a sphere, and just roll this dude up and down. So I'm gonna put one here. It does not have to be you know, super straight. It's fine if it's not. Put one down here uh, and then slice plate. So you can now see that the seam is gonna be placed, placed opposing each other. The blue lines here are travel, right? So I've got travel ticked, I've got seams ticked, it's showing me where everything is. That should give you plenty of good information to go off of when you're doing that. <clears throat> now, I've run my test. Here's what mine looks like. So again, right at the bottom, I started with zero millimeters of retraction. Let me go ahead and move. No. This out of the way, sorry about that. Uh, I had zero millimeters of retraction here at the bottom. As we went up, we, we increased retraction by 0.2 millimeters. So two, four, six, eight, there's one millimeter right there of retraction. Two, four, six, eight, ten. there's two millimeters of retraction. Right? Now above two, I'm pretty good. Probably a couple, like one stray here, here or there. So I'm gonna say anything above 2.4, maybe 2.5, 2.6, I should be good to go. 
This little guy over here is actually when the print finished. There is that little swoop, that little hair that sticks up at the end. Uh, and when I tried to snap that off, a little piece came down. So that's not actually retraction chest hair. That's in print hair. Um, so anything above 2.4, 2.6, I should be good to go. Now, here's where you make that change. You can you have a decision to make now. Um, not really. You have a couple of options. Remove this. You have two options now. Now, if you do a whole bunch of swapping of filaments, so of types or of different uh, different types of filament, like PLA, PETG, what have you, or you swap out different makers of PLA and you've noticed like there's a big difference between makers, then you probably want to create um, a new filament profile that is specific to the PLA you just tested, right? And then you can make your changes here. So in your settings override, you're saying I'm overriding the machine settings that I've set for my default retraction for this filament, and I'm going to set it at 2.6 millimeters. Save it. Your other option is you can just make this change sort of your baseline, your default, right? Your permanent thing. And in that case, you can leave this unchecked and you can save this. And you can come up here to your machine. Click on your edit preset button next to your machine. Click on extruder. And under the retraction settings, you can just say my default now is 2.6 millimeters of retraction. And I'm going to use and then I'll change based on that everybody's going to be a little bit different. I print in predominantly PLA. I print in predominantly this gray PLA. Um, like 99% of what I print on those two machines is like the same product, blah, 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 blah. Um, so I get to play around with other stuff every once in a while. But for right now, since I'm in production mode, that's what's going. Um, so there you go. That's how you tune, fine tune retraction settings. Uh, so I hope it helps. I hope it works for you. Um, Subscribe, thumbs up, all that great stuff. Drop a comment, and I'll talk to you on the next one. Thanks.